Have you ever been trying to record a keyboard or a drum part in GarageBand using the touchscreen and it's just not sounding right? Well, in this video, I've got a tip that might be able to help you. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And using the velocity sensitivity control here in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad could be just what you need to get your performances sounding consistent and level. So let's jump into the phone now and take a look. So what are we talking about? We're talking about velocity sensitivity. So if we select any keyboard instrument, let's come in here and just grab our keyboards. We'll just grab the electric piano here. Here is our keyboard instrument in just a moment. We can play away there, but there's an option here that's gonna help us out. Now this is slightly different on the iPhone and the iPad. So on the iPhone, we have velocity sensitivity that we can control here in our settings. So we go to track settings up the top here, our little mixer icon, into track settings, we go to velocity sensitivity, and here we can change this between high, medium, low, or off. So a high velocity sensitivity will mean that the screen is gonna be very sensitive to touch, which means that if we tap it gently, we get a very soft sound if we tap it hard. We get a very hard sound. If we drop that down to medium or low, there's less sensitivity. Even if we hit it hard or soft, it's still gonna register a sound. If we turn it completely off, then it's gonna be the exact same sensitivity every time we touch it. So we get a completely even performance. We don't have to worry about the touch sensitivity, which is going to be good for some parts and not so good for others. So what are the pros and cons of velocity sensitivity? Well, we've got our grand piano here and you can hear that we can actually add some different variants. We can get some good dynamic range with the velocity sensitivity on. So if you want to play a solo part or something that needs a lot of passion and feeling, we can use a high velocity sensitivity and we'll get that difference in our velocity. But what if we wanted to use something like an electric piano to record some chords as a pad for our solo? Well, we'd probably want to turn velocity sensitivity off so we can record something like this. Because now, no matter how hard or soft we hit those keys, we get a nice consistent volume, which is gonna work for this particular part. But what about our other virtual instruments I hear you ask? Well, the other instrument we can use this with is our drums. So especially for electronic drums, you may want to come in here, go to our track settings, go to velocity sensitivity, and make sure this is off because you want a consistent performance. So if you're playing a beat like this, To get that drum machine sound, you definitely don't want a whole lot of variance. But if you're playing an acoustic set, so if you came in here and changed this to an acoustic set, then you may actually want to turn your velocity sensitivity back on by coming in here to track settings, velocity sensitivity and making that high, medium or low to get some more variance in your performance. So what about our other virtual instruments like our guitar, our bass, our strings, our world instruments? Well, we don't have velocity sensitivity on those, but as always in GarageBand, there's a way around that. And that is to come in here to our keyboard instruments and go to other and then we can actually access all of our strings our guitars and even our bass guitars here so let's select this picked bass guitar and now we can actually go in to our track settings velocity sensitivity and if we turn this off we can now play our bass guitar without any of that velocity sensitivity, which is gonna give us a much more even performance. And now what if you have recorded the track without velocity sensitivity, but you wanna add some back in? Well, no problem, we can actually edit the velocity on each individual note. So if we just tap on our recorded track here, tap again, go to edit, then each of these notes can be controlled by just tapping, tapping on velocity and turning it down or up. So we can actually set that. So if we wanted this particular note for whatever reason to have a really low velocity, we can drop that all the way down. And now if we play back this track, you can see there it's really easy and simple to adjust individual velocities of individual notes here in our track. And one final thing, if you're on an iPad as opposed to the iPhone here that I'm using, you'll actually have a velocity slider as one of your dials here on your keyboard instruments, including your guitars and your bass and everything else. The reason I show on the iPhone is that I wanna show everyone exactly what you can do. If you're on the iPad, you can use that velocity slider to control how much velocity sensitivity there is gonna be in your tracks. 
And there you go, a very simple but a very effective way to make sure that you've got a consistent performance in your tracks here in GarageBand. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, you can leave those down below and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. If you'd like to check out some more videos, we've got two more linked right down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon in the top right corner, or you can head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.